Hello, and welcome once again to Exit Strategy. This is the podcast where we ask comedians, what would you do with your life if comedy was no longer a part of it? What is your exit strategy? What are you going to do with your life? you got a lot of time on your hands if you're not cracking into a moleskin notebook. Is it moleskin or moleskine? I've heard people say, I say moleskin, but then somebody said moleskine several years ago, and now I think it's like a... LaCroix, LaCroix situation, and I get very, I don't like to say it out loud, so I'm being very vulnerable with you guys, right up top. All right, today's episode, I've got Johan Miranda here. He is an excellent comedian here in Los Angeles, but then also, um, he is going through a, uh, well, he is one of America's dreamers. He is a recipient of DACA. Uh, He was born in another country as a child and brought here as an undocumented immigrant, and now he is facing the Trump or the Trump organization, the Trump administration. He is uh, facing an imminent uh, potential deportation, depending on how uh, the courts rule on DACA. So there's a, there's a very pressing and urgent situation in Johan's life that also informs his comedy. He has a frankly a, a terrible situation that he has to live with. And, f- and be sort of mindful of at all times. But he also has an amazing perspective on it. And also he's able to funnel it into a very, very funny um, act that uh, deals with the issues head on. And uh, if you ever get a chance to see Johan Miranda live, check him out and you'll hear all about it. But we're also going to talk about it here on Exit Strategy because I'm curious uh, how this works in the mechanics of comedy. If you've got this huge situation that uh, you deal with and you're going through, you always have to talk about it because that's what we do as comedians. You get it out. You're uh, you're able to formulate your dark feelings and dark situations into humor. That's what we do. Uh, And Johan's doing that very well, and I'm just kind of interested in the nuts and bolts of it. We get into some comedy talk shop, shock talk, shock top. We drink some shock tops. We talk co- shop about comedy and how uh, uh, the immigration status uh, that he's going through uh, informs his comedy. But then also we get into exactly what this podcast is called. We talk about the exit strategies. What would Johan Miranda do if comedy was no longer a part of his life? He's got two. Spoiler alert. Anyway, I think it's time to let the man do some talking for himself. Let's get to it. Here is Johan Miranda on Exit Strategy. Pro, he knows what he he's knows doing. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, he <laughs> he is a pro. Yeah, is it? Are you adjusting to it well? I think the yeah the, uh, the first month was a little um uh sca- like I I'm, I'm a bit more confident. Now. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a tariff. Like it's w- bartending is one of those jobs where it's like in my head I'm like, well, yeah, I could totally do it. Right. But then if I think about it, I'm like, oh man, I mm-hmm. gotta like. Because is it like hard liquor and stuff too? So you have to know. How yeah, to, yeah, hard liquor and like yeah, some cocktails and um, so yeah, I just that's when I'm like I I don't have any more. <laughs> I've lost all my confidence in this completely. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you're out of the Postmates game. It seems like that's a real uh, bummer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shout out to all you know th- all the troops that are still out there. <laughs> 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 you know, I feel like oh, a veteran. Now. Yeah, like, I, uh, I feel like I, my my leg got blown off, and I'm like a retired vet now. <laughs> He's got stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. like when you, somebody drives by and you know well, they're doing I Postmates, s- you give them a little nod. Like, I have a know. I have Grubhub and uh, caviar drivers come by my work because it's a, well, I'm inside of a food hall. Yeah, so yeah. It's yeah. Like, they, like, oh, I salute them. A little bit I, of respect. Yeah, yeah give, them, give them a discount. <laughs> oh, thank you, but bless you. I think yeah. that like jobs like that. Any freelance job, like we all have to stick together with mm-hmm. that. I used to do it, and I had to get out because I couldn't handle it. Because uh, I, I was not, I was never good at the like, save your tax money. Eventually, you'll have to pay it. Like so, at the end of the year, I would have to pay all that nonsense that I forgot to pay. I couldn't do freelance. It's too. Ugh, too this much. is the year that like ten ninety nine start getting fucked too with the the new. What is yeah, it? yeah, yeah. It's so I'm not look, and I worked it all last year, so I'm not looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. 
I'm not. I don't want to deal with that. I want. I, for so many years, I just had a job, and the job was shitty. But then I just wouldn't have to worry about that. But then when I started to have to worry about that, then I'm like, mm-hmm. oh well, the free. You can never win <laughs> <laughs> until we're yeah. all uh, where we want to be, but mm. we're not there yet. Well, thank you for coming to do the show. I uh, I'm I'm glad that you're here. Uh, you popped back into my mind the other day. You came and did my show, Sauce, and I was very glad to have you. Yeah, it's a fun show. I know it's uh, it's always glad. I'm always glad to see you. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, obviously, uh, the big part of your life these mm-hmm. days is mm-hmm. your continuing. Um, I mean, everything you talk about usually is uh, circling around your scenario mm-hmm. you're in. Would you like mm-hmm. to clue in the listeners? Sure, as to uh, I'm, uh, I'm an undocumented immigrant with DACA status, which is kind of in limbo right now. Mm-hmm. So. Really, is going to come down to the Supreme Court, yeah, uh, and um, at some uh, sometime in, in the fall. So we'll see how that goes. So that's but coming up I'm, very I'm, I'm quick. I'm pulling for my boy Kavanaugh to oh, <laughs> have God. mercy on me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. See, that's like, uh, and I hope that this isn't too much too soon into this conversation. <laughs> but that seems like there's just everything that happens in this uh, country for a lot of us is obviously very much. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of there's a lot riding on it, but for mm-hmm. you, it's there's mm-hmm. even more, mm-hmm. uh, obviously. Right, right. <laughs> but I want to talk about this because um, I want to I want to know how this plays into you as a stand-up. Mm-hmm. I want to know how uh, this has affected you as a performer, and how maybe you've grown as a performer, and how it maybe influences what you do uh, on stage. Because that I think is very uh, fascinating. Because I mean, like. I don't, this is this is like the most hot button contemporary issue you could possibly mm-hmm. talk about, and you are like in the forefront of it. Right. So, how long have you? How, how when when did this become like the focal point of your life? This was like t- was 2016. Yeah, I guess after the Trump election. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. so DACA first got passed in 2012, and I was like I think 22 or 23. Yeah, and that's when I got my driver's license work permit, and I was basically like had all most of the privileges of you know yeah just being able to live life and so from 2012 to 2016 uh those are my golden years so sort of yeah <laughs> fucking just doing what i want just really just catching up on life just uh you know moved down to la and just so it was yeah i guess it was when trump got elected that so the, but before that uh you i mean you have the disadvantage of not having a social security number you can't work mm-hmm. in a regular job so then this sort of opens up this all these opportunities for right. you to yeah. make a decent living i, yeah. I assume and, yeah. and hold a job that you wouldn't be able to hold right and then um w- at what point in this in this are you w- it with comedy have you started comedy then so i started like uh, pursuing comedy like in 2010 okay uh, so i was i was actually like just undocumented like uh, when i started and i didn't talk about immigration start- status when i started because yeah I, well, I didn't tell anyone. Like, I'm, I have you know friends that I grew up with that I didn't tell because it's just it's it's a it's a gamble. So I, what yeah, if I, if I can tell like to some <laughs> random ass people at a coffee shop. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. By the way, I have this thing you can report me on at any at your whim. I imagine that like <laughs> what's on your mind is I'm new to stand up. Mm-hmm. Like that's mm-hmm. enough to worry about. Without right. Right. Having I'm still to deal trying not to bomb. Like, yeah. Fuck, I can't. <laughs> bomb and also tell you i don't you need can that at the end of my night I just <laughs> yeah yeah deal with the bomb so then uh daca gets passed mm-hmm. you're able to uh p- pursue a job probably better than you had before you're able to to do all these things that you no longer that you didn't get to do beforehand uh and then when trump gets elected and then uh he takes away the dreamer status or threatens it mm-hmm. uh at what point in a comedy are we now? So now you've been doing it for several years, right? But you hadn't been talking. You still hadn't been talking about your immigration status on stage. I I think I I had some. I'm I may have had like a, a, a joke or two. I even when Trump was uh, the uh, bef- before he even got the nomination because he he from the beginning he he was known as the anti-immigrant. You know? Yeah. So I, I I did have just some jokes about. Um, I think I had a joke that was like, if if Trump. Moves to Mexico. I mean, if Trump, if Trump w- wins, wins the president. <laughs> Trump moves to Mexico. Uh, if, if Trump wins the president, I'm moving to Mexico, <laughs> just not voluntarily. Yeah. And, you know, so, and I think, but you know what it is? I think, you know, before before Trump, people didn't, nobody knew what DACA was. Yeah. Like, it was like, like me telling people, I would have to explain it. Like, oh, this is this program that 
happened and and people were like oh, okay whatever <laughs> it was such a non-issue yeah and you know it, it came in the summer of 2012 and it wasn't an issue in the election of 2012 yeah it only be, like it became an issue the following election you know <laughs> like romney didn't even like fucking harp on it like um so i think i didn't really talk about it as much because it was just such to it's it's such uh it's so much context to yes. like have to explain it where most people, you know, I, I'm talking about everyone in general. Most of like all of us didn't give a shit about politics before. <laughs> like, yeah. and so <laughs> you people, you'd start talking about it and they'd probably roll their eyes. Yeah, be like, what like, the fuck? That's yeah, not really what we talk about. Yeah. 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 So it was just a dip, you know, different atmosphere. So when I, f- when Trump first got elected, you know, I, and I would start talking about it. It, it was, it was kind of hard uh, because, Nobody like we were. All of us were learning so much. Yeah, <laughs> the past <laughs> couple of years we've just we've all gotten like a uh, yeah. We're, a, we're definitely a, getting a graduate like, degree in political yeah, science. Yeah, we're getting our civics lessons yeah. in for sure. Uh, but I mean, it had to have been a little bit more on the, your the forefront of your mind, uh, right? As it was going down. I mean, everything that he does has hum- tremendous consequences mm-hmm. to you even being able, being able to stay here, right? Uh, so when you start talking about uh, your status and your fears and, and like you you bring because right now you have such a large chunk of your act that is just so raw and real and it's you talking about a, like a, a honestly terrifying thing. How does that get into the act? Like, is that a gradual approach into it, or do you just like one day like that's I, this is all I want to talk about? It's it is a gradual approach. Uh, I think um, when when you know when when he first got elected, I was like literally the night I was you know pretty devastated. Like, yes. Uh, um, I remember uh, Bori hit me up to hang out that night, and um, I was like, oh, I, this is before like you know this is like early in the night, and I was like, all right, yeah, I'll come over as you know yeah. as soon as. As soon as Hillary wins we, Florida, yeah, we didn't know. I was like, I, I told them, I told them, I said, as soon as she wins Florida, I'll come over. And then she never oh, went Florida. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, so uh, I, you know, that, you know, the expect, um when 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 Trump ran for president, he his campaign promise was to repeal DACA on his first day of office. Mm-hmm. So I was expecting in three months to have it gone. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was kind of like, uh, in survival mode and like, I was just like, ugh, like, it's just like on edge all the time. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I, I, I personally, don't, I, I personally think he, he didn't really understand the, what it was <laughs> or like what, yeah. a, what a shit show will be trying to repeal it. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, to this day, we're, we, I still have it. Right. So it's like, uh, and to answer your question, it's, so it's, it's, it's been a gradual process cause it's like. What what is it? 2019. Like, <laughs> it's 2019. Like you can only. It feels you, like it's been a lot yeah, longer. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's been like what two three years now. It's, you can't be terrified for that long. Yeah. After a while, especially after a year, I'm like, all right, well, you have to function. Are you gonna fucking do it or not? <laughs> like, <laughs> it really does feel that way. Like, all right, well, get it over with. Yeah, yeah. No. What a fucking yeah. <laughs> so you uh, start to gradually bring this into your act and. Um, now it's like, it, it's a it's a large chunk of what you do. Mm-hmm. Do you feel a pressure as somebody performing something that's very raw and real and resonates with a, with a huge population? Mm-hmm. Um, like pressure, like an obligation to do it. Well, or? I guess the the I mean, we always talk about this on this podcast where it's like there's this there's comedian and then there's just like normal people or regular mm-hmm. people, and we get this. Uh, we're sort of blessed with this opportunity to, if there's anything going on in our lives, we get to vent about it, we get to talk about it. Uh, For this entire population that is in this limbo status, I mean, how many of them are in Mm -hmm. a position to speak out, you know what I mean? Like, do you feel a pressure as somebody who has that soapbox to represent it? Where I'm at right now is I don't really have any more takes on immigration. <laughs> I really, I really don't. I, I think I'm tapped. I, yeah. Immigration is really is a boring thing. Like yeah. it's it, the majority of immigration. I mean, there's obviously there's different types, but the majority is, you know, um, uh, 
jobs don't exist in this place, and so they move to another place. Yeah. Uh, and when you can go, you can write a whole dissertation about why you know the jobs didn't exist, whether it's you know U.S. foreign policy or whatever. But it's the what it is is just economic migration, and and um, and so I don't. I don't know. I, I've thought about it a, a lot, and there's just not much. I mean, that's that's literally it in one minute. Like, yeah. I, I could say the the problem <laughs> to give you like a, a what what is what is when you do a, a pilot um, a log line. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give me the elevator pitch <laughs> yeah, on, yeah. Ill- on illegal immigration. The, the log the log line. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that anyone's ever given a log line yeah. on this issue. The log line on immigration, as far as I'm concerned, is it's not an immigration problem. The, yeah. uh, specifically, the immigration from Latin America. It's, it's if you want to study the foreign policy of you know the U.S. government in the past couple of years, there's your answer. So, U.S. foreign policy problem. And the reason I, har- I the reason it's important to focus on that is because it's gonna with uh, climate change. Uh, it's going to make this migration look very small. We're, we're dealing with millions, yeah. tens of millions. And so I, if, and, and that's going to be, you know, so that's going to be a climate change problem. It's not going to be an immigration problem. You know, it's sort of, it's, uh, it's sort of, a, the, I, I think the, the struggle I have with immigration rhetoric, it, uh, or just the entire dialogue is it gets bogged down on like the immigration or, and then that gets bogged down like who's a good immigrant who's a bad immigrant yeah. or whatever but it's like that's not even the problem it's 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 this these other uh you know issues and you know it, it almost makes no sense to even talk about anything else and so that's sort of where you know and i i, I call my one-man show why johan miranda should be deported because it 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 does it does just i feel even if i'm even making my case seems harmful to yeah the immigration dialogue. I feel like I'm wasting everyone's time. Well, I, I you did a an interview with LA Weekly, and you said something that I thought was very interesting about that because I think you said something along the lines of the people that they portray in the media as dreamers mm-hmm. is they they talk about people who are really overachieving mm-hmm. r- role models, mm-hmm. and then you were just sort of saying something like basically that's not me, but like. That doesn't really. Like, not everybody is that. Yeah. Not everybody is like the the, the scholar or the mm-hmm. contributing some phenomenal genius yeah. crazy thing to the world. It's just there's just regular people. And so yeah, I I, I feel I it I there, that, and that's why I don't make the case because it feels harmful to make the case because the Dream Act was introduced into Congress in 2001 mm-hmm. and it's 2019. It's been 18 years now. We're still not. And this is, the Dream Act probably affects. At most, two million, pe- two million young people. Yeah, that's like a drop in the bucket compared to like what we're gonna deal with. And so it's like we don't have the time to spend another two decades. Yeah, about another group. You know, it's just it really in my personal, in my personal, and this is the log line. It's, it's gonna be open borders or genocide. It's what it is. Yeah, and like we don't have time to like sort of hand ring over like oh it's like. <laughs> Is that? It, but oh, but he went to college or whatever. Who yeah. gives a shit? The judgment of every individual <laughs> case is a little too too messy. Mm-hmm. But I, to bring it back to comedy, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I guess the question that I have is like, are you tired of talking about this on stage? Well, are you tired well, of the act? <laughs> it's. I mean, I I just don't. What I that log line or whatever. That's mm. what do you do with that? Yeah. Right? I can, I can, I just some. We just talked it through in three minutes. Yes. So what now? Yeah. Like I have, like let's say I'm doing an hour. I don't have shit. I don't have shit. I don't shit have shit else to say about it. Like what do you, you? We can talk about U.S. foreign policy. We can talk about climate change. But that, I mean, that's outside of my scope. I don't know yeah. shit. I'm not gonna do research. But then also in the context of comedy, like. If you have an hour, I would assume. Maybe I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. You don't want to talk about. Like that level of of conversation and that level of topic for an hour. I imagine that in your life you have other aspects that feed right, your personality. Right, that because right. not everything can be uh, like Noam Chomsky level right, right. politics and comedy. Like John Oliver is going to do a, a better, <laughs> more. Re- he has a whole staff to like break yeah. down whatever details. I'm not. That's not going to be, you know, my my thing. Yeah. And so I mean, I that's I I'm I'm what I'm trying to do with. With with my act or whatever, when I talk about immigration, it's just almost say don't look, 
don't look to me for the answers and don't look to any immigrant for the answers. Yeah. Like it's not, it's not, it's not about the immigrants at all. It's our inability to deal with reality. Yes. <laughs> That's something we do here. That's something we do here. Yeah. Um, what percentage of the time, like l- let's say you have a show, uh, let's say you had, you know, a couple shows this week. Mm-hmm. Are you talking about this? Uh, what percentage of the time are you talking about this? And what percentage of the time are you doing the dick and fart jokes? You know, the, doing the regular uh, everyday material. So, like, if I'm booked on a couple of showcases. Yeah, this yeah, week. yeah. Okay, so, that's a good, yeah, that's, so, I, I mean, it's the same approach uh, even bef- since before where it's, you know, especially since, you know, I'm mostly booked on showcases where it's, like, six people or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. six comics. And, you know, so I'll usually read the room on Yes, <laughs> there the definitely room. can like, be some instances where you probably. I, I I don't even bring it up if we're if everyone's bombing. Like I don't yeah. like who gives a shit. I'm I'm year one jokes here. You know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um. And I don't know. Yeah, I, I it it really depends on the audience if they're if they seem like up for stuff. Like <laughs> they want to get fuck, into it. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I usually know before I even go up. Like, am I even going to talk about it? Yeah. Yeah. And w- does it shake down to uh, most of the time, or is it kind of just up in the air still? Um, I guess m- the majority of the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, I don't know, 70 or percent of the time. It's yeah. such an interesting situation, yeah. because, yeah. like, I'm just thinking about just, you know, benign jokes mm-hmm. that I just do all the time, and you're just like, I, I don't know, are you get it? We all get to that point where we're just like going through the motions. Is right, it right. still? <laughs> is it, I imagine since it's still part of your life, you still can bring yeah. the fire up uh-huh. on it. But like, it's just so interesting to have a piece of material that's so, like, so important to like now, mm-hmm. and then to do it all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the yeah, keeping yeah. it fresh, right? Or even have to worry about like this life situation and keeping it fresh. Every now and then, I have to. I do like a immigration fundraiser. I think the last one I did for like was like for a group of immigration lawyers. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, well, I that's <laughs> the time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're gonna want to bring that up. I want to be like, all right, just go. Th- yeah. <laughs> what if you just didn't talk about <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm tired of it. I don't want to do yeah, the material yeah. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, just in closing on this topic, I, where where are you now mentally? Like, are you because obviously this is a uh-huh. the courts are are making their way to this decision. How do you feel now? Uh, I'm I'm grateful I don't have kids. Yes, <laughs> I'm, we're I all feel grateful I've we don't <laughs> have kids. Yeah. I or any real responsibility. Yes, yeah. I, uh, there's DACA recipients who do have kids and are like, "Am I going to be able to provide for my kids yeah. next year?" I'd have no real. I'm like. Uh, so I, I mentally I'm fine. I'm yeah. like, um, if worst case scenario that gets repealed, and I'm like, get some couch surfing for a while or something. I don't know. Like, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really think about it too much because it just seems at this point it, I, it's become such a, it'll be such a political loss or capital for like it would just like. I, and I think Republicans know this. Yeah. They, you just can't. What are you gonna do? <laughs> like fucking. It's just, yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's in it, practice. It's gonna be messy. It's gonna be real messy. Yeah. And and I don't I don't think anyone, even Republicans, want it. I think they just we're really dream. You know, quote unquote dreamers are just at this point uh, bargaining chips. Yeah. That's it. Mm-hmm. We're just like oh we'll th- uh, we'll build the wall for. And we'll save the dreamers, which you know it comes with. That's a whole nother kind. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just it keep it's messy just talking about it, let alone doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you have a show. Uh, why uh, Johan Miranda should be deported? Are mm-hmm. you going to mount that one up again? Uh, so I just did it a couple weeks ago. I don't know exactly when I'm going to do it again, but yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll definitely post it on my social media. Is that a full one man show? I haven't gotten to see that. So yet. yeah, I just do an hour. It's, I mean, it's it's. Uh, calling a one man show feels. Uh, I mean, it's <laughs> you, don't, you don't want me to call it a one man. No, I mean, I I do it. I I, I, I when yeah. I when I when I you know yeah. I I describe it as one in in it and this sort of this sort of the uh, this I've I've come to sort of resent not stand up comedy but the format at least from people like that don't have their own fan base like me right or yeah. at, most most of us right yeah who are just perform like. I, I resent that I have to call it a one man show in order for people to understand that this is an hour that I'm s- yeah. I'm committed to. And I'm not gonna fucking I'm not gonna pander to you. I'm just gonna do what I want to do. 
And, yeah. and why do I why do I have to call it a one man show just to do that? Because yeah. in stand up comedy, there's a sort of understanding like oh like we're just like fucking dancing monkeys. Oh, you don't like that? Let me let me change it up. Like it's just how. Yeah. The reason I have to call it a one man show is because stand up comedy is like the least respected art form. Yeah, you wouldn't want to, ju- and also I think you'd have trouble getting people out if you called it stand up. Yeah, like, exactly. Because you stand up everywhere, but like exactly. you, ha- it, you have to. There's do, no respect yeah. for it. You know, it's, I don't know. You have to distinguish that this is going to be something different. But right. I love that you just have a <laughs> a slight visceral reaction <laughs> <laughs> to the term one man show. No, I I don't resent like I. There's people who do it well. Like I yeah. fucking John Leguizamo is one of the best to do it. So I I, I resent that I. I, re- I resent that I have to call it that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, because, uh, yeah, people just... We could call it something else. You could just call it a, a, an extravaganza, a celebration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Just, just yeah. whatever you want to yeah, call it, man. Yeah, Because One Man Show, to me, when I think of it, I, I when I see it and I'm going to it, part of me's like, I don't know, man. Like, it's a commitment. Yeah, yeah as an it, audience member, I'm worried. Right. It's, 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 yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a commitment for the audience and i i want that every night as a stand-up comedian i want i want the audience to be like i want to be a dictator where i'm like i'm going to do what i want to do i'm not going to change anything i would wouldn't you love to do that just like just like yes (laughs) yeah like why do we have to go back to our old material when they suck yeah you know (laughs) I, that's why, because I, most of the stand up I do now is at my show, mm-hmm. so I feel like um, I feel an obligation to just to be on my best behavior and good. Yeah, and when I do a sh- someone else's show, mm-hmm. it's so liberating because then I I do not give a shit. Right, because my attitude, if right. it's weird. I don't feel like it's affecting right. next week's show, but at my show, I'm like, oh, I gotta be smiling. Yeah, and smi- yeah. Come back next week, you yeah. know. I feel that. Or even if it's not your show, it's like you still, you know, if you're if you're a guest, not like you still don't want to make it hard for the next comedian. Yeah. You still don't want to yeah. like you. You want to fuck around, but you don't want to completely shit the bed. Like, you <laughs> yeah. Know, like there's some respect. You got to think about outside people. Yeah. For so sure. it's like. Yeah. You're never you're never liberated. <laughs> I know. It's, it's just be so nice because even when like you get the good shows, like you get the big show, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. It, they sometimes feel stiff. Like even mm-hmm. if you're succeeding, because mm-hmm. you are like commit. You're like I'm gonna do the best stuff I've got, yeah. and I'm gonna and I, like you want it to be tight. But then that's not how I usually am. So it's not really like even a good representation mm-hmm. of how, of what I do. Yeah, because I'm like best yeah. behavior guy. Yeah, but. it's just terrible. I don't like it, but I'll gladly do any of your big shows. <laughs> yeah. People don't yeah. don't get me wrong. I'll bring it, yeah. but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be happy about it. <laughs> How are you feeling about your comedy career these days? How are you feeling about uh, comedy in general? Um, I'm so sort of, I don't I don't know. I mean, I wish I was making money off of it. Oh, uh, we all do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish. Yeah. Um, but other than that, um, I'm f- I'm feeling fine. I feel yeah. like I I'm I feel like I've for the most part figured out stand up, yeah. and so it's like now it's just like all right, well I'm just gonna do my thing until something happens. <laughs> yeah, but I think you're in a good position because like when because I do a show every week and uh, I don't know I, I've gotten to the point where there's so many comedians I don't know who a lot of people are but then I when they said Johan's gonna I believe you just dropped you were dropping in right right when he when I knew you were coming in I, it's just my mind's at ease because I consider you somebody who can go up and deliver right you've got chops okay so I thanks you're very welcome <laughs> <laughs> but now we've come to the part of the show where I have to take all that away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have to take away comedy yeah. all together. Yeah. Yeah. Comedy's gone. You got to put all of your eggs into another basket. Is there a, a, a path you would want to go down? Is there a exit strategy you would want to pursue mm-hmm. if you were not doing comedy? So my f- my f- my first real job mm-hmm. uh, is bartending, yes. which I just started three months ago. Like yeah. when, uh, I've, I was, I've been working Lyft. Postmates like s- since I got DACA, right? So it's like I have I haven't had a long time. I haven't had a <laughs> yeah. real job. Yeah. I haven't had anywhere where I'm clocking in anywhere, or I have a you know yeah. I've, been, I've, been, a, I've yeah. been an entrepreneur this whole time. 
<laughs> uh, so, yeah, you've been a small business. <laughs> yeah, I've been yeah. a small business. So l- literally, th- this is my first job in yeah. a, over a half a decade, I think. Um, and I'm enjoying it. And if I, so if comedy's off the table, then I, I, I would probably do bartending. I was, uh, but bartending is from from my from what I can tell is is the jobs are pretty hard to come by or it's it's, it's really seems yeah. like it, it's who you know <laughs> it's kind of show business like like I really shouldn't like when I first started I was like I shouldn't have this job like I should <laughs> <laughs> it is ridiculous that I have this job like I, I yeah. had the there's a little pressure yeah, on yeah, that yeah 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 um so my <laughs> In this Plan B scenario, my Plan C. <laughs> <laughs> We're already going into Plan C. Okay. Um, like let, let's say the bar closes down or whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. Or, or 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 you know, I don't or know. maybe you just decide you don't want to be a bartender no. anymore. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I can't. I, yeah, I can't. Like I, when I'm seventy, I, I don't want to. Or sixty or seventy. Well, hopefully I'm retired. Yeah. 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 But you like, don't want to be behind when, the bar when, what, when I'm older. I like, I want to like not be awake at three a.m. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I was. Um, so after. Uh, I actually, after high school, I I completed most of a a barber program. Oh, uh, I went to Muller Barber College in San Pablo. Yeah, uh, and when they first just opened, so we were like the first class. Um, and uh, when I went to get my DACA, well, there, I wasn't able to like uh, work. The whole program leads to a certification, and you can't really get the certification unless you have a social security. Yeah. So I was like, all right, well, um, I when I when I went to apply for Medaca, I I ended up visiting Muller Barber College again. Um, my old um, the guy who owns it, uh, I think it's uh, Frank Quattro, <laughs> a real old it. school Italian. <laughs> um, yeah, he re- he goes, oh hey, what's up? How are you been? And I was like. I, I had to get some. I, I think when you, if I remember correctly, when you apply for DACA, you have to like get records for every year you were in this country. So I was like getting him, like yeah. I was getting records, like I was in this country studying at Muller Mor- Bar- Barber College. And so he gave me the records. And when I got the records, he, you know, he was like, "Hey, you know, you're, you're pretty much done with the program. Like, yeah. whenever you want to come back, like, because most of the exam is just sanitation and like." What, yeah, what like, you, like, or like making like sure to clean the comb. No, yeah, or like because <laughs> like it's razors and stuff. Like, you oh, wanna, yeah, 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 you want to yeah, like yeah. make yeah. sure it's like in. Um, yeah. Uh, so he's like, yeah, whenever you want to, and I should have done it by now. I, I just I was making so much money as an op- entrepreneur for Lyft <laughs> that yeah, I was like, you, I was you just, couldn't pass up yeah. that Lyft lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm busy yeah, yeah. zooming <laughs> around. So I mean, I assume I'm assuming he's still there, or or uh, my records are still there, so I, yeah. I can I can go back. So. <laughs> to answer your question, I would keep bartending, and I would get my barber's my barber license. Yeah, and I think I'd be happy with those two because I I really like those two jobs are pretty cool. You know, you, you uh, you just I I just want a job where you don't take work home. Yes, and once it's over, it's, it's over. over. Yeah, and sure. and at the and and both at the end of your shift, you you got cash in your hand. So you just, you always you always feel good. Yeah, a little tip uh, action yeah, going yeah. on there. Yeah. So, okay. So I would I would keep bartending and I would have bar- a barber thing as a yeah. as a. When was the last time you cut someone's hair? I think it's been years. I think I cut Bori's hair like uh, a couple years ago. Yeah. Is I, it like I, riding I, I, a well, bike. Well, the thing is, I don't have my tools. I I, uh, I think I think they're in the bay. Um, yeah, I have like a, I have like a whole kit of like yeah you know, the, the scissors and the razors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it like riding a bike where you just would get back into it, or would you have to take? Would you have to be like a few people need to <laughs> try try out? I think I still have uh, imp, uh, the chops, but also it, barbering is is like bartending where I because I didn't I didn't even go to bartending school, yeah. right? So uh, the schools don't really teach you the actual chops. It's it's you just do it. Yeah, you just have to get repetition. Yeah, so I if, I would just have to. Do it over and over yeah. again, and I, you know, I, I think, I, uh, yeah. Well, you know, the, you're there's thousands of us comedians, R- right? And right. They all need haircuts, <laughs> like yeah. I would have you've my got own clientele, yeah, for sure. And that's like the the hardest part of yeah barbering. I have a newfound respect for barbering uh, since I started going to uh, one up the street because I didn't realize um, 
that they're kind of like comics in a way. Mm -hmm. Like the, it, there is like an artistry to it. Mm -hmm. And I found out that uh, some barbers, like if, like you know, if you're going to Chicago, or you're going to be in New York for a couple right. of days. You go and you find spots to do around town. Mm -hmm. Barbers do that too. Really? That's, yes. Yeah. Like, like can they're I get, like, can I, can I get a chair uh -huh. here for like a day? That's great. And they rent it, and then they're just. Well, now you're now I'm really com yeah. <laughs> I might just quit comedy <laughs> and do this. Uh, is, yeah, you can. I mean, uh, not to give you comedy uh, back, uh, but yeah. maybe you're cutting yeah. uh, hair in the yeah. afternoon and then uh, hitting the. Well, then yeah. you get your people in the audience. Yeah, I mean, both barbering and bartending is kind of their own subculture, where yes. it's a uh, everyone knows everyone. And everyone knows every bar, yeah. you know. Oh, you work at that bar. So I have bar. I have bartenders come and get drinks, and you know, we. It, it that's we it is true. Yeah, that's touch. another thing I found out recently <laughs> yeah. too. Because I'm at a bar every week, and I found out they all know each other. Yeah. And then you go to another bar, and they recognize yeah. you. It's and I'm like, uh, hey, because yeah, yeah, yeah. they're all just tall, uh, tattooed guys. That's right, it. right. Yeah. So like I. So far in bartending, I've I'm, I've made an effort to at least learn the basics, but I'm not like going all the way to become like an aficionado. Yeah. So they probably look at me like I'm a hack. They're like, oh, look at this fucking. <laughs> this he does rum and coke. Rum and coke. Yeah, this guy is just <laughs> one trick pony over here. Yeah. And but it doesn't matter because I'm not in that. I'm not trying. But if I was, then I'd be the fucking. I be watching <laughs> bartending YouTube videos. I'd be getting my game on. You know, I'd be same thing with Barbara. I think you'll get into yeah. it though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because you're you've only been there since what, January? Since January, yeah. Yeah. I mean give it some time. Right, right. You're gonna start having signature cocktails. You're gonna <laughs> yeah. do they have you wear the like the glove or is it not one of those places? No, no. When it's like so like there's a, when you go to the ones where it's like the cocktail is gonna be twenty dollars. Uh -huh. They always have a one glove on. What's what's the glove for? I don't know. <laughs> I think it might be a grip thing, but they uh, only wear one. They don't yeah. wear two. I don't know what it is. I had a bartender come by. Said he, he was he was a mixologist. Yeah, like he still, I was that's like, what it is. I was like, oh wow, there's there's levels to this game. <laughs> there is. He was, he's the headliner of the the con. There the are bartender. yeah. It's <laughs> and it just kind of reminds you how like we're all just these little communities because yeah. there are like the top mm -hmm. the head bartenders honchos. that like get and they have their own magazines and yeah, yeah. press and shit like that. That yeah. could be you. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it sounds like you're not as enthusiastic about pushing it in the bartender world as you are at the barbie barber world. Um, well, I just I, um, I, I, I mean, I'd, I'd be interested in both. Yeah. Like I, 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 I think. Um, I mean, both is really is just you just do it. Yeah. Like there's so many times that when I'm bartending, people just. You know, I know the the basic cocktails, but if someone asks like, yeah, some shit, and I was like, "All right, I'll Google it," <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, like, "Fucking good luck." I'll with just this. be in the corner yeah, over yeah. here with my phone. Yeah, then yeah. I'll get to your yeah. drink. Don't worry about so it. I, yeah, I think you're right. When the sensor, I'm just gonna with time. I'm eventually yeah. gonna fucking learn okay. everything. Yeah. So I want to ask this about both scenarios. Let's do both. Uh, so let's say you know. You become an influential <laughs> barber or bartender. I want to know, like, all right, what is your like, for barber? Right. What is your ideal scenario? Like, where are you working? Like, what is your? Uh, are you in one of those like really faux retro right. like bowler hat ones? Right. Or are you in like a really sleek place? Like, where would you want? What would be your ideal environment to work in? Um, I think a, a class. A Regular barbershop, yeah. Well, no frills. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, the the thing is, uh, I, even I remember even in the barber when I was going to barber college, everyone had plans to open up their own barbershop. Yeah, and I was like, that seems even if even if I'm not doing any, the comedy, like that seems like a lot of work to just. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, well, you said you don't want to. I don't want to go to work. Yeah. yeah, I just want to go somewhere, work, and so I'll never like open up my own barbershop yeah. or bar. <laughs> you know, so I'll just. Um, so I think in both scenarios, uh, wherever they let me, <laughs> or wherever's wherever they let me, wherever's close to home, I don't want to commute either. So it's like all about <laughs> convenience. Just to convenience. Me. Uh, it doesn't have to be like a, a, a specific vibe at the bar. Like mm -hmm. this is what's on the jukebox. Just right. Whatever's closest to your house. And I, I ha I've had this happen a couple times when I'm bartending. Uh, and it's, it's I guess it's, it's sometimes it's old, but no, nah, it doesn't really matter. It, they'll ask me. Well, we'll talk. And then after a while, we're, we're talking, and we're like, so what else do you do? And it's yeah. like, 
well, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. Which, like, I, I personally don't care, but it's like, it just seems insulting to a bartender to be like, Oh, you. This is all you're doing. It's like uh, maybe they mean yeah. like maybe maybe it's because Los Angeles, everyone has like a fucking thing, or maybe it's because like they expect bartenders to like open up their own bars. But like if in this scenario, in this hypothetical, they're talking. About, I'm just a bartender. Yeah, I'm just not a bartender. owning just, yeah. anything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, <just>, I'm going <laughs> to stay. I'm going to stay in the apartment it. that I'm living in right now, where my <laughs> rent goes thirty three dollars up a month a year. <laughs> I'm just gonna. That's the rest of my life. Yeah. But you'll be, uh, I mean, another thing about both of these scenarios, both barber and bartender is kind of what you're talking about. Like, there's a lot of conversation involved. Right. How are you feeling about this? I mean, you're going to be Mm chit-chatting with people, all sorts. I mean, it's a very, like, community job. So I I think I'm uh, relatively good at it. Yeah. Uh, I think my weakness, and it is, I guess, more true in barber, but also in bartending because we have TVs. Yeah, with guys they want to talk sports. Yes, and, and I I don't I've yeah. never followed my whole life I've never followed any sport. <laughs> I'm like completely. I yeah. mean I know like the but very they, basics. I know I, I know the rules. Yeah, whatever. But like they want to like and they the thing about guys is they just assume. Yes, and yeah. so a Lakers game will play. Oh, can you believe so? I'm like, I don't. Sure, okay, <laughs> I'll take your word for it that that, that thing was ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, so, dude, I get that. Yeah. I learned that I can't get my hair cut during football season mm-hmm. because I cannot talk the talk. Right. Like I, I, I kind of painted myself into a corner where I was like, I, I said like <laughs> the knowledge I knew, and you, so you now nodded along. Yeah. He <laughs> assumes that that I can go, but I. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I like pour sweat when yeah. they start talking about yeah. it because I'm like I can't I don't know at all. So if if bartending or bar or if, if that's what I'm doing, yeah, I'm when I think my plan would be like some sort of I have like some <laughs> so I'll have my bookmarks on my laptop like here's where you go for the <laughs> summaries. I just want the the talking points yeah, yeah. of every sport. Yeah, the scores, the basics, yeah, the the, the just yeah. the headlines. Yeah, that's the, it. That's it. Yeah. Uh, just I think I would make an effort right now. I'll make no effort because whatever. But like, yeah, I think I would make an effort. Like, all right, well, yeah, it's, it's just know the, what's happening mm-hmm. in every sport. This is the tricks of the trade. Yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. You're already <laughs> learning. You're already ready to go. So, somebody told me. What, oh, this is like the most one of the most embarrassing things I heard about another comic is that he. He, he, or or someone overheard someone else say like, like he was giving him tips like, yeah. oh you if you're gonna open for male headliners, learn about sports so you can talk to them. I was like, oh, he fucking fucking that's weasel. gross. <laughs> learn about <laughs> yeah. sports so you can. Oh, yeah. oh. Uh, Anyways, yeah. it's a weird code that I've never mm-hmm. been able to do. Uh, I l- I learned baseball, but that's all I can do, and that's like the least popular one. Mm-hmm. I can't hang with these sports mm-hmm. conversations, but it's okay. Uh, so in our scenario, you are a bartender, you are a barber, and are you feeling like you're getting the uh, creative juices flowing? Like, are you getting the same creative outlet that you did, or are you going to have to do something outside of work to to stimulate that? In in this scenario, do I still have my Twitter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can be a Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> <You> can, <laughs> yeah. So my, right now, my Twitter handle is at Johan Comedy, so I would change it to at Johan Barber. barber. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna have to talk to Twitter about <laughs> my, that. You might lose your followers. My cover photo is just the the barber pulls. <laughs> Dude, if I became a part, I'm I'm scared that I'm gonna get like a tattoo of like a some hair, some hair clippers. Oh, you are. You're gonna get <laughs> way into the subculture, yeah. and then you're gonna be part of uh, instead of com- comedy Twitter, you're gonna be part of barber Twitter. Right. So yeah. Barber's yeah. gonna say something awful, and everyone's gonna yeah. be talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be your new life. And I think that that's a fantastic little exit strategy. I think we've uh, we figured it out. Cool. Good. Now we're going to take a little break, Johan, and then we're going to come back. You're going to choose the sponsor for this week's episode. So okay. start thinking about who you want to uh, maybe be the uh, the spokesperson for. We're going to come right back. Maybe, maybe we've got you an opportunity to sell out big time, and then uh, big things will happen. Mm-hmm. We'll be right back. Probably doesn't. I mean, I don't. Unless you work at the drawing room, I don't think you're going to be there early. Would you work at the drawing room? Open at six a.m. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. If I, if I honestly, if I quit comedy and I, what I would, <laughs> <laughs> although I would have to, I would still. I guess uh, this is a good or bad. I would still be like, I would see comedians all the time. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. <laughs> Which yeah. Is, yeah. I don't know. 
They would definitely uh, hit you up yeah, yeah. at 6 in the morning at the drawing room. I went there for the first time um, for the 6 a.m. Uh, last week. What would you think? It was surprisingly more uh, active than I thought it would be. Yeah. Like, I thought it, I honestly, I thought it was going to be kind of sad. Yeah. But then when we got in, like, people were awake mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. It, 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 well, you could well, tell it was the rest of the night. Well, it really depends. So, was it Sunday morning, Saturday morning? Uh, Sunday morning. Okay, so yeah, come on. It's Saturday, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go, go there on a Wednesday morning. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're. T- I know what it's like. <laughs> it's a little yeah, different yeah, on yeah. a Wednesday. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got me. But I, I, th- I still thought the vibe was, uh, was, was. I was expecting something totally different. And I was <laughs> pleasantly surprised because this is my favorite part of the show. Okay. This is where, uh, you know, I don't have ads. I don't have like promo codes. I don't have stuff like that. I need to have ads because it's a podcast. Right. So that's why you come in handy. Johan, I want you to talk enthusiastically about a product. Maybe just maybe they're going to hear this and they're going to say, we want this guy. Who is the sponsor for this week's Exit Strategy? This, uh, this, this week's Exit Strategy is brought to you by Moeller Barber College. All right. They have, we got the plug in for have, the Barber College. They have San Pablo location, mm-hmm. Oakland location, Hayward, I think. They're expanding. <laughs> get in get in while they're... Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, not, I think it's a nine-month program for, for... Well, I don't know how much it is, but I'm sure, you know... Yeah. Uh, hit up Frank Quattro. Tell him Johan hit... <laughs> tell, tell, him, <laughs> tell him you heard this ad at Exit Strategy and Johan sent you. I'm sure he could work out a... He's a reasonable oh, man. Oh, goodness. I want a little cut of this Frank <laughs> Quattro. I do. Wow. We're like, out of all the, the sponsors, this one is like, seems like, wow, people could actually mention, like, we could get it back to him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'm saying this jokingly, but I'm sure if you actually mentioned my name. Like, all, like it would definitely lead back to this podcast. And he'd say, wow, that's great. Yeah. Uh, what It's Muller? Muller, like M-O-L-E-R. M-O, wait, say it again. M-O? L-E-R. L-E-R. Okay, yeah. Muller. Barber College. Mm-hmm. What is it? Just run me through. Like I'm new to Barber College. Mm-hmm. What? What? What am I? Nine months. What am I doing? So it's interesting because it's so many hours. Yeah. It's, it's literally like it, it seems it's like forty hour weeks for like nine months. I don't know how many hours that is. Yeah. You, you don't have to do them like that. You could do it like part time or whatever. But when I was doing, I was doing like full. So it was like it was like nine to five. It was like having a job. And and you know when we first started, it was slow because we just opened up. But, but it's it's I think it was like five dollar haircuts and so it's like so you're every, cutting real people. I'm cutting hair. Uh, yeah. So most of yeah. it's like uh, people bringing their kids or just you know broke broke folks <laughs> sacrificing <laughs> yeah, the yeah, kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or just or old uh, yeah older people too who just don't give a shit anymore. Like yeah, oh, fuck it's it. Like yeah, I don't want to spend a lot of money. On yeah, that. yeah. And so yeah, uh, you you're spending most of the time at your chair uh, either cutting hair or watching other people cut hair. You yeah. Know, and they also have an instructor on site. So you could watch the instructor instruct someone cutting someone else's hair, and yeah, yeah. so it's a good times. And if yeah. not, you're reading your book. Yeah. Do you have a, a specialty? Um, something you did real good. It's it's funny. I I I I my my dad has a similar haircut to mine, and yeah. so it's just regular. Yeah, uh, I forget what it's called, but um, yeah, just short. <laughs> yeah, just the regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Short the, hair. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Re- give me the regular. That was, yeah. <laughs> So you know how to do, uh, you know how to do you. Yeah, I know how to do. Wait, me. can you cut your own hair? I, uh, you know, that I, seems hard. I, I, it, it, it's, yeah. I, I guess I can with if I use mirrors. It's not gonna be so amazing. It's, so it's not worth. Not that, worth it. It's saying. like Jesus. To spend. <laughs> yeah. I cut my own hair. Can you tell? <laughs> yes, we can. Yeah. Um. Well, uh, Muller, Muller, mm-hmm. Barber College. You heard it. Ask for Frank Quattro. What's Frank Quattro like? Is he a cool dude? Yeah, well, old school Italian guy. Uh, he's you know f- family man. I don't know. <laughs> he's, he's very yeah. He's, <laughs> he seems like a character. He's, he's, he's like, like character. Frank Quattro. Frank Quattro. Like yeah. I don't even know if that's his real name, but <laughs> talk to <laughs> Frankie. Yeah, 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 Frankie Force. Uh, so go to Moeller Bar- Barber College. Name drop Johan Miranda, and uh, I don't know. Frankie will do. Frankie will hook you up. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Maybe he'll knock a day off of your <laughs> training or something. I don't. Know. <laughs> Uh, but as for you, Johan, is uh, people are listening here and they might want to know more about you. Is there anything that you would want to uh, push them towards to get the 
Johan experience? All my ex- all my social media, Instagram and Twitter is uh, and Facebook. It's at Johan Comedy. Yeah, you know, get get on it while it's still well, before it's, it's Johan Barber. <laughs> and don't cyber squat on <laughs> Johan Barber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't. <laughs> I'm gonna go get, <laughs> take take that spot right now. <laughs> Maybe just get <laughs> Johan Bar. Uh-huh. And then that way you can get yourself right. covered either way. Bartender. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's just yeah. Johan Bar. <laughs> uh, but go to Johan <laughs> Comedy and uh, check it out. And then you were, uh, I just saw you're on uh, the Netflix show. Yes. Uh, uh, the title is Larry Charles' Dangerous World of Comedy. It's a four part documentary series where he, ex- where he explores and interviews stand up comics from all, all around the world doing uh, you know comedy in precarious situations. Yeah. I'm in episode three, which is. The U.S. Epi- focused episode uh, dealing with race and you know American Check it out. So yeah, episode three. Check stream it because uh, every stream Johan gets a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how Hollywood works. Yeah. Hey, thanks for coming on and talking to me about uh, everything. And I, for one, hope that you stay in this fucking country. Damn it. <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, my, yeah. Thanks for having me on. You're very welcome. Uh, that's been Johan Miranda. We'll see you next week on Exit Strategy. Goodbye.